Hello and welcome to the Horoscope Vault, a place to explore the world through the lens of astrology, sharing cosmic insights that aim to support you through life's crazy ups and downs and help you make your most confident decisions throughout life's chapters. I'm Charlie, an associate member of the American Federation of Astrologers and Astrology Reader for Radio's The Bob and Sherry Show. And this episode is the monthly switchover episode. It is the astrology of May, looking at the progression of degrees that the sun moves through during this month, looking at what they mean, plus the six main check-in points that they offer for all signs, and also the biggest aspect punctuations of this astrological season. This show is different in that it looks at the aspects in their exact degree, weaving in the meaning of that to the meaning of the aspect. So you won't find any new moon, new cycle, generic explanation. It's more like a new moon cycle that means you have to prioritise style over substance. And there's none of that age-old full moon, let something go generalisation. It'll be more like this full moon degree suggests that you let go of holding back power and instead you launch all of your machismo energy into taking when you would usually give. If you enjoy the specificity of the show, please do consider leaving a comment or a review. It really helps boost my morale, if nothing else. And so here it is, the month of May, because this is a whole season switch up. And it might even be the one that you've been needing. (laughs) So this episode looks at the month of May 2024 in two ways. It's going to be your six check-in points. And that's the theme of the progress of the month via the degrees that the sun moves through. Then followed by the mention of a few astrological highlights that occur throughout. And so no waiting around, getting straight into it. May does begin on a very weird note and it's not a high note, it's not a low note, it's just weird. There's a bit of reflection into the past and it's this idea of distorting the events and experiences that you've been through. It's like minimising past mistakes, it's like rationalising past mediocrity or past situations that were not a win, minimising them so that they support your clinging to the current. And I guess the key word opening the month could be justification, and it's like an irrational justification of staying the same and not changing based on having done so in the past, which probably isn't the best right now because, you know, innovation and change is what pushes you forward through growth. And it's like an irrational justification of doing the same thing, repeating things the same way, is really comfortable, even if life itself is not. For example, if you've done something before and it was successful, then you wouldn't be in the position to have to try and find success from it again. That success would have continued. You would be living that success. But if you're finding yourself having to redo or re-achieve a thing, then that means the first time round of doing it may have contained a mistake, which led to this point, and digging yourself out of a whole situation that you're in currently now should not be seen as failure, but it's also not ideal to romanticise something that keeps you stuck in a pattern of wrong choices or incorrect existence. And this really happens when fear of change is present, and despite using the word mistake, it's not really that it's a mistake, there are no mistakes in life, not even during the difficult times. It's just that sometimes things happen so that you can see what you don't want and so that you can return to a more authentic path. So if you are examining a new life direction, explore how this new way relates to or is similar to the cycles that you have always known and look for that part of you that has remained unchanged because you may need to change it and transform it if it's no longer serving you or if the previous attempt didn't work out and you're essentially back to square one. So the opening check-in point for May lasts about the first three days from the 1st of May to the 3rd of May. It's about not over justifying the old and instead digging deep, looking at your past actions and motives honestly to encourage reorientation and change. And a good question to ask yourself during this first few days opening in May is where could this continued action lead if you repeat it the same way? Like really think about the results of your actions further down the line. Are you just going to go through this whole entire pattern cycle again? Are you expecting a different outcome when you are just doing things the same? 
So the next theme of the month is disintegration. So this is from May 4th to around May 9th. And the whole idea of disintegration sounds intense, but we're going to reframe it to be the precursor to breakthrough, which makes it a little bit more exciting to digest. And really, there are times when disintegration or letting go is just the only pathway to regeneration. Things become stronger by removing outgrown elements, like how pruning a tree or pruning a plant and cutting away some of its leaves allows the rest of the plant to become more beautiful and just full. So in this situation, there is a need to release what is outworn so that you can return to a path that is more full filling. And this requires a lot of courage because you essentially need to wait a situation out without acting. And the mind, it just always makes you want to act. It thinks that it needs to act. But actually, you just need to exist until the next step becomes clear. This is a huge lesson in patience and not everybody is going to succeed. This is a huge test in patience and not everybody is going to pass. If you want to be someone that does pass, then respond inwardly while waiting for the change while waiting for the cycle to complete itself outwardly, knowing that there's not much you can do in this situation other than become receptive to what the external events are showing you, especially while all of this change is put upon you. Trust that whatever is being removed is making room for something to grow in its place and stay open to this opportunity for renewal. So the first check-in point of May, number one, is where and how are you clinging to the past? And then check-in point number two is about leaving everything well alone for the cycle to fully disintegrate itself. The third check-in point is from around the 10th of May to the 16th and it's about holding it together. It's about this ready-to-go point where you're kind of prepped to get involved when the time shows that it's right. And one good example of this is like running track. You don't have to have run track to know that the starting point is this inaction because they're actually not running. They're just there static waiting for the sound of the horn or the gun to go off to signify that the race has begun and when that horn sounds they're off because they were there ready they were there holding everything together that they needed in order to be ready to sprint forward so it's this inactive readiness and that's what your third check-in point of may is about standing firm where you are trusting that time will let you know the moment that you need to exhibit action And it's from the ready waiting point that you might discover aspects at play that you hadn't considered. So check in point number one, are you clinging to the past? Check in point number two, leave everything alone for the cycle to disintegrate itself. Check in point number three, be in a prepared state of ready, but trust the time and I guess the horn of life to let you know when it's time to go. Check in point number four this month from May 17th is about contemplation. And there was this saying, that makes a lot of sense for this check-in point. It says that life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. So this is about successfully splitting apart the past from the future and not getting them intermingled. And when you look backwards, you'll see that cycles remain constant, although you don't always remember the complexity of particular situations. That stuff becomes vague over time. You do remember the general theme of these repeating cycles. Things like, why do you always attract the same kind of person or why do you never feel happy where you live or why do you get into financially stable positions to then only fall out of them seasons teach us that all of life moves in cycles so your fourth check-in point this month is about reviewing the most prominent cycle in your current experience and looking at it objectively rather than subjectively wander back through the situation from a perspective other than the one you already know which is the one on repeat it's that cycle from the past from check-in point number one that you are clinging to and ask yourself what you are not doing differently or maybe ask yourself or the universe to show you a sign of what you're not seeing clearly in this situation this is the ultimate in self-awareness and self-consciousness and it provides you true understanding derived from analysis of unchanging personal action. So check in point number one, are you clinging to the past? Check in point number two, leave everything alone and let it disintegrate. Check in point number three, be in a prepared state of ready and trust that the time of life will sound to let you know when to go. Check in point number four, look deeper into the repeating cycle for what needs to be done differently. And now check in point number five, This is going to be the event kick-starting. So maybe the horn sounds. 
something loudly blares, letting you know that it's go time. And it's at this point of the month, which is around May 20th, that you'll get this burst of inspiration that ignites the new idea. You might receive a message that offers more enthusiasm and passion, and it's a clear, clear sign that opportunity is here, or it's at least coming, which is probably welcome if you've hit a plateau. So be prepared for that change. Let yourself get excited around this time. And the good news is, whatever it is, it will lead to greater fulfillment. So check in point number one. Are you clinging to the past, the stuff that didn't work, like it's a trophy or a prize or the only answer that you can use? Check in point number two. Leave everything alone and let it disintegrate. Check in point number three. Be in a prepared state of ready, healthily, and trust that time will sound some kind of alarm to let you know when to go. Check in number four, look deeper into a repeating cycle for what needs to be done differently. And check in point number five, it's about to get fun. The final check in point of this progression before I look at a quick rundown of pivotal dates this month, from the 25th of May to the end of the month is about sensitive susceptibility. It's about strengthening your resolve. It's about not believing everything you see or you read or you consume. Or maybe a better way of explaining that, it's about examining the things that you see, that you read, that you consume before accepting them as valid. And this works in two ways because you can examine things to reject them because they are invalid. Or you can examine when you are skeptical to actually discover that, wow, this thing, this idea, this concept, this thought would actually be helpful when you didn't figure that it would be. Something magical is on the horizon. So stay grounded while you look for that transformative nudge that will allow you to trample any barriers that are currently impeding your forward progress. So quick recap, check in point number one, are you clinging to the past, the stuff that didn't work? Check in point number two, leave everything to disintegrate. Check in point number three, be in a prepared state of ready and wait for that alarm to let you know when to go. Check in point number four, look into the repeating cycle for what you need to be doing differently. Check in point number five, appreciate that it's about to get interesting and fun. And check in point number six, follow everything up and research any potential ideas and approaches before you go and dismiss them. Those check in points were delineation of degree progression, which is punctuated during the month of May with these following specific astrological transits. And these are just a handful of the biggest ones. Obviously, the week by week rundown is going to give you every transit for every week of this month. But a zoomed in perspective, first the Taurus new moon, which happens on the 8th of May, super early in the morning. It's like 3 a.m. on East Coast time. So that means it's something like 10 p.m. on the 7th of May on the West Coast of the USA. And this is the theme of fixation. It's the opportunity for renewal in a situation that requires the blending of opposite qualities. So you may have been fighting change and fighting doing things differently, but if you learn to discover the value in another approach, then the material promises of Taurus New Moon become really abundant and accessible. And obviously, on the flip side, if you don't do the new approach, you start this six month cycle of being further away from progress than you really want to be. The next notable point on May 13th is when the sun conjuncts Uranus. And this is the theme of courage, specifically the courage to expand into an alternative approach to something. Maybe that's based off of the new moon's alternative revelations, but either way, the penny drops on May 13th and it becomes clear as day that this path is going to work for you. A different path is going to work for you beyond anything else that you've been trying. And it's a growth point or maybe a breaking point, or maybe a breakthrough point. May 15th, Mercury enters Taurus. And of course, all of these pivotal points are going to be detailed in the weekly horoscope show. This is just preview offering for this monthly outlook for the purpose of maybe, you know, you might have things to plan and these dates might make sense of something for you. So it's nice to have them now. Mercury in Taurus is about all things Mercury, which is communication and travel. It's trips, contracts, news, information data, it's the mind, it's comedy, it's language, nervousness, the nervous system, and all this stuff presents through the filter of Taurus, which is patience, reliability, money, food, material comforts, and beauty. So maybe it's a financial contract. 
or it's a short trip to go pick up some money or a trip to go earn some money or to go shopping and spend money. It could be trying different foods to support the nervous system, exploring the nervous system and supporting foods for that and maybe even supplements. It suggests being more intentional with words. There might be some stubbornness with words, some stubborn silent treatment that's ongoing, silent treatment that's impressively long lasting. It might indicate the time to pick up a book or subscribe to a blog or a newsletter that shares tips on some kind of improvement that you're trying to master. And whether you are in a relationship or not, these matters are going to be things that you need to do independent of someone else. So if you're taken or you're single, it doesn't matter. You might need to let someone else do their thing independent of you and you independent of them. One challenge of Mercury and Taurus is trying not to get too sentimentally attached to the past, which interestingly links to the, you know, six check-in points, the first of the six check-in points. And another challenge is going to be to moderate your indulgence. On the 20th of May begins Gemini season. This will have its own full episode, but in the name of preparation, looking forward to that point from here now. The upcoming Gemini season is very much less Gemini than usual, so ambition subsides for a moment and you're more inclined to see a perspective that is much larger than yourself. It's less speedy and more trusting and spiritual, with moments of procrastination which are really just some kind of regenerative pause. And things make sense on a bigger, more ethereal scale, full of all these otherworldly coincidences and happenings. The final two points of May are pretty noteworthy. The 23rd of May is huge. Absolutely massive. So big that I don't even know how to present this towards the end of the month, whether to do a show just on that date, the 23rd, or to do a show for each aspect. But first you have Venus conjunct Jupiter, and this conjunction happens at 29 degrees of Taurus, which is a critical degree or an anoretic degree. There's all kinds of names for the 29th degree in astrology. But the 29th degree of Taurus is the moment of perfect timing. How the earlier theme progression mentioned that being actively patiently ready, like you're prepped for action but you're not pushing it, this conjunction is the green light to go. And it also makes a sextile to Neptune, which is from this instant perspective, it's like a blessing on blessing on blessing. It's like this really lucky push and the type of luck where you say, wow, I can't believe this actually happened. It's the type of luck you don't quite understand how that luck could even show up after so much struggle and chaos. On the same day, the 23rd of May, Venus also moves into Gemini and the Sagittarius full moon occurs. So it's like the 23rd of May is this very well one of the biggest pivot points of not just May 2024 but the entire year. It's like a moment of full force power and it just gives me this Sagittarius symbolism of the archer pulling back the bow you know, you're pulling back that string of the bow, which seems like regression, but when you actually let go of it, it propels the arrow all the way forward to hit the target faster than you can imagine. So try to remember all of this pulling back is for this really, really quick progression that may be coming up around the 20th of May. And then May 25th, a final big year-long transit shifts signs with the Jupiter leaving Taurus and entering Gemini. And Jupiter is not comfortable in Gemini at all. But I've got a feeling that's not even going to be too much of a problem because of all the other supporting aspects happening prior to its ingress. It's just like there's so much personal satisfaction going on that the disagreeable nature of Jupiter and Gemini, where everybody just becomes deaf to each other's communication, because Jupiter being in the opposite sign from its home sign means it is debilitated. This kind of doesn't really matter. It's this super fractalization where we split up even more as a collective. Being disagreeable with one another isn't a bad thing, it's homogenization and all believing the same thing that has caused problems in the past. You begin to oppose traditionalism more and more as you work through the battle of opposing the very things that you were taught to do in life, now realising that that is not the way for you to live your experience. Circumstances open your eyes to the extent where you understand why all those previous pursuits, why they went wrong. And you make some peace with that instead of, you know, checking in with the past and clinging to the past way of doing things that has at some point let you down. The significant tension that shows up thank you to Jupiter and Gemini is a worthwhile tension because now this tension is with the outer world instead of 
within you and around you and about you and yourself. You are now your own best friend with more trust in yourself. Even if others think you're doing it wrong, you probably think they're doing it wrong too. And that's all good. From here on in, the blessings and the luck that have given you a boost, like jumping on that power up mushroom in a Super Mario game, is what is going to keep you going. The Jupiter and Gemini individual episode is going to explain more why this ingress is lucky for Aries, Gemini, Leo, Pisces, why it's transformative as heck for Cancer, Virgo, Scorpio, Sagittarius and Capricorn, and why it's a bit of a quirky push to the top for Taurus and Aquarius. But generally, this month of May, with its slow progress, like the pace of a ripening avocado, When it's like, no, 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 no. And then boom, yes, ready. Now is suddenly the perfect time to experience this explosive positive progress. May 2024 is really quite astonishing. Readings are still closed because I'm getting booked at the drop of a hat. And if you missed the usual weekly show, then I'll link that below in the notes so you can catch up on this week's general horoscope forecast. Happy first of the month. I'll be here for every big astro point along the way. So make sure to subscribe and follow the show so you don't get left in the dark. Until next episode. Bye. (laughs)